I am very excited to have my next guest join us. She's a very talented singer and songwriter, the one and only Katie Turner. Hello. And to emphasize Katie with a C. Yes. It's like kind of like the five nine thing. Um, the C is very important. <laughs> yeah, to my name. The five nine thing is important. We were just talking about your height off camera. Oh my God! Yeah, that was off camera. I have to re I have to repeat the story <laughs> that I'm five eight and a half, but I rounded up to nine because I feel like it makes me more special than. But you already seem to be so confident in being special. Do you really need the half? Um. Yeah, because it makes me go up to dudes, and then I can also like lower their egos because they'll think they're like five nine or five ten, and I'll obviously be like you know, I don't I I just gaslight. I just use it to gaslight people. <laughs> like no, I'm five nine, and then they'll be like, wait a second, then what's my height? That's pretty interesting that you approach dudes. I would think that guys are just flocking to wherever you are. That is the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me, but so far from the truth. No, I um I have a method of flirting um, that I have been utilizing on this tour, which is actually I'm so direct, and it creeps them out, and I'll pass it off as a joke. So I'll just approach guys and I'll go, "You're so hot, ha ha ha," and they'll go, "She's weird." And then I'll guys just keep... love that. You know how many guys that are insecure and in trying to approach a girl, and to have a girl come up to them, and I'll just, I'll mean... just be like really weird about it. So I'll go, "You're hot," and then I'll giggle really like crazily, and then I'll run away, and then they'll just be so confused of what the interaction was. But I'm like, I nailed it, because they'll think about you. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're gonna. Remember. Oh, you're thinking that's a good. Thing. Yeah, see, so that's but why them, they don't approach. They see me. you running away. They don't even have a chance to really say, "Oh." Yeah, so it's not a good method. It's, I would not okay. recommend it. But that is why I approach them, and they can't approach me. One because they can't catch me because I'm already running away, giggling like. See, I was trying to take mental notes, but apparently no. I have to erase those. Yeah, no one should ever take mental notes from me on how to do anything. Anything. People ask me for advice, and I'm like, what makes you think I have my life together? Well, this is ironic because you have a dear Katie thing on your website, and you're promoting the heck out of it. People asking you for advice, and here you are saying, don't take my word for it. No, I, listen, it was, you know, an impulsive thought where I'm like, maybe I can give good advice because I could maybe do that. And that's my toxic trait. I'll look at something and I'll go, that seems easy enough. I could do that. Like someone juggling. I'm like, I could do that. Or like, it's the same thing with giving advice or being someone's therapist. I'm like, easy. I could do that. And then I actually read through the things and I'm like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> like, someone's question was like, why do I keep eating banana bread even though I'm lactose intolerant? Help. I'm like, how do I answer that? I don't know. That's why a very specific question. I, I would know. think feelings and how to handle themselves is a little easier for you to yeah, answer. Yeah, my right? advice was just, just don't do that. And I realized <laughs> yeah. that's not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Are you using any of the questions and answers from the advice thing that you're doing as kind of a source for mm. music? Honestly, I'm such a selfish writer with so many thoughts going on in my head that I just have a wealth of resources just in my own brain to draw inspiration from because I'm just in my own world, in my own head 24-7. So I haven't really based it, any of my writing and other people's stories because, you know, I'm, I'm still sorting and separating through like, oh, that guy gave me a mean look in fourth grade. I'm going to write a song about that. Like, you can always find something up here. Yeah. What about the experiences touring? I'm sure then, therefore, all these things that you're doing, guys, feelings that you're going through and so forth are a wealth of in, uh, 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 inspiration as well. I think songwriting is like kind of like boxes in an attic where you have to like open a box and then kind of sort through. Uh, and then some of the other boxes just sit there for a while and just collect dust. And that's kind of like with this tour, you would think I have so much to write about, but I haven't even, I'm like emotionally procrastinating processing anything <laughs> around me. So I'm sure it'll probably come in like six months from now. I'll finally start to open like what happened on tour? Like what can I use from? But I'm just like vibing. I hate using that word. I feel so like LA, like influencer, like I'm vibing. <laughs> but really, I'm just 
I'm like, I'll, I'll get to that when I get back. You haven't been living in LA very long. What's it been like to immerse yourself in the industry? Other songwriters, producers, peers, performers? Imposter syndrome. Ah, so much imposter syndrome. It's like, um, cause I'm looking at all these really cool people and I'm just like, how do I do what you do? I'm not worthy uh, and <laughs> causes me to have like existential crises all the time. I think that's my go-to thing now. I, that's my go-to emotion. Um, but on a serious note, it really is cool because when you're in like your town, like your suburban home, like being weird and wearing like this outfit, people would kind of think like, okay, it's all about kind of like conforming and like fitting in. And now it's like an industry where it's like, you want to stand out and like something you were so ostracized for in high school is actually celebrated. So that's really the cool thing about being in the music industry. Yeah, it's almost like a prep school where everybody's the best of the best. It is business, right? So yeah. you're competing. I know. For the same ears in a way, and also for the same eyeballs, viral numbers all the things. How have you handled that part of it all? Because we saw all those TikToks from Halsey, other artists, Florence Welch, others that are talking about label pressures about going viral and all that. It's weird, I think, because as an artist, your art, it, like it's weird because your art is so personal and then you write from personal experience and your art is you. So then when your art starts becoming capitalized in a business and you start becoming a brand, it's really hard to like find that balance. So when a label tells you to do TikToks, that's just like logical, the analytical part of like, yeah, brand, it's very like caveman, like brand do TikTok, brand gets seen. But you're like, I'm not though, I'm the, so it's kind of finding that sweet spot of being like, and that happy balance of really just believing in all the music you do write and you do have control over because you do have control over the words and the melodies and the music and then trying to really get a team that supports you 100% and loves you. And so when you have to do the shit you don't want to do, it's less soul crushing. Right. Um, it's definitely been an adjustment. You clearly took advantage of the moment that you had on TikTok recently. I don't want to say congratulations, but I mean, it's good that other people have heard your music that might not, not have been familiar with you, let alone your background and all that stuff too, right? It's been incredible because it was something so simple. It was literally as much as, you know, the part of me that wants to like moan and like throw a temper tantrum on the floor, like TikTok is the bane of my existence. It's also a way that is given like artist and more control in the sense that the video that went viral and had a moment and got people to even discover who I was, was me sitting in a bathtub that I posted because I was genuinely just sad and going through it. And that just one moment that I recorded in 60 seconds, now today, six months later, has like 30 something million streams. And it's that cool thing of like, yeah, an app, changed my life and has gotten a lot more attention. And I honestly am so thankful. How do you look at your stint on American Idol? Because that has its audience and that set of eyeballs. But then you do this on TikTok, half written song, people stumble upon it and they're like, yes, give us the whole thing. There's a bit of juxtaposition there. 100%, I think looking at American Idol, I'm always so, I mean, hindsight now, TikTok really wasn't a thing in 2018 when I did American Idol. But if I had hindsight now, and you know, I was auditioning for American Idol now, I would have been like, I could have saved myself all that trouble and stress and just posted a 60 second clip. <laughs> you know, it's not that easy as I'm saying it, but in that moment, I'm like, damn, it really was because um, American Idol, you know, you have to audition for producers and then the executive producers to get in front of the judges and then every round, it's like 14 hour days, but I loved it. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it any other way. Do you think that experience toughened you up to kind of 
give you perspective to now do what you want to do because you were judged all that time and you're like, oh, enough. I think it's like you get the full treatment and it literally goes zero to 100. And after American Idol, if you leave it still going, you know what, this is still what I want to do, then that that's how you know. I think I had to go through like being on such a public stage, going from a high school choir solo to eight million eyes on me and getting all these people like looking at you and commenting on everything you do. If I gave someone a look just because I was disassociating, it's Katie is so weird and has bug eyes. And you're like, where the, where the hell did <laughs> that come from? But even though all of that, it was hard, it did toughen me up and it did make me realize, oh, this is still what I want to do. Like, the, I, I really do love this. That's awesome to hear. Yeah. Because you came out of the gate being yourself, at least publicly on, on national television, mm -hmm. right? I know you did the cover and they tried to make you do things and, and all that, but what you're known for is your personality and who you were at that time. Now being 22 years old, um, how do you view music making now versus that point in time? When I was on American Idol, I had no experience in anything. Um, I was getting life experience by reading like fan fiction and I was writing songs based on fiction and what I thought things would feel like. But now music making for me is drawing more from like inner experiences and not having to guess like, what would it be like if I ever am in a relationship? It's like, okay, well, I've had that experience and I have have had heartbreak and I've felt more things and I think it's given me a lot more to draw from when I make music and it's let me like be more connected with my music. You're on tour now mm -hmm. and you're doing the things. I'm sure you picked up a lot, a lot of bad habits on tour. You talked about procrastinating the writing. What is in the works? I'm really hoping for an album. I have, um, I'm really hoping to put out like a full body of work I'm really proud of. And um, after tour, just unpacking that, those boxes and writing really good songs that hopefully people like and um, just going on my way and seeing where everything takes me. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's a good time, a good point to do that, right? Because I'm sure there are some pressures or some expectations of, hey, let's capitalize on these moments or this situation, put out an album now. But you're living your life and yeah. you have some perspective. You have a couple of EPs that you figured out your sound, you figured out some writing styles that fit you. And um, I, 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 I'm looking forward to that. Thank you so much. I really hope when ever it comes out that you know, it's good. So hopefully we can look back on this interview and go, oh, she was right. Maybe it was good. Yeah. Um, so fingers crossed. <laughs> really appreciate you doing this and best of luck with everything. Thank you so much. It is Katie Turner right here on B-Sides.